Um, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Adam Green from ATA Engineering. I'm joined this afternoon by Scott Kidney, also from ATA Engineering. And we're going to talk to you about um, system simulation. And then Scott's going to do um, a, a deeper dive into an example of an environmental control system. And just a few housekeeping rules. Um, we, we have a, a chat as part of the Zoom system. And if you want to put any questions in the chat, um, please go ahead and, and we will mute every, uh, unmute everyone at the end of the the event um, to talk about those questions and answer them. So um, we look forward to, to getting some of those. In. So as an introduction, I really want to just introduce ATA Engineering. Um, we, we are an employee owned company with around 200 employees of, of very um, specialized engineers from, from PhDs um, and, and master's engineers with, with over 14 um, professional engineers. Um, and Scott is one of those. So thanks Scott for joining us today. Um, we also have a, a lot of experience in this space, 15 years on average, which, as you can imagine, is, is, is lengthy. And the markets that we work in is, is, is primarily aerospace and defense, but also robotics and controls, um, industrial mining and consumer products, and, and also more recently, um, themed entertainment. So um, it's a, a diverse set of industries that we work in, um, and, and all of them are fun with different levels of security concerns. And Part of what we do is, is, a, is full, um, complete integrated solutions of, of design analysis and test across, across the, the whole gambit of requirements in, in engineering consulting. And our offices are, are scattered throughout the US. And three of them are in the West Coast at the centers of aerospace activity. Albuquerque, Denver, Huntsville, and DC are the other offices. And a part of, of what we do is also, we are a, a Siemens Platinum level partner um, for Siemens selling Siemens Sim Center tools to basically help with our work and also help all our clients achieve success in, in, in computing and engineering services. So, with that, I'm going to go into a little bit about what is Sim Center, AIM Sim, and, and many of the people on this call will be familiar with it, so we'll, we'll go quite quick, but nonetheless, just a quick introduction of what is it. And, and so, Sim Center, sorry, Sim Center AIM Sim is, is part of the the um, Sim Center portfolio from Siemens, which is the full set of tools that they use to integrate really the whole of a, of a design and manufacturing production environment. And so AIMSIM is, is a 1D simulation tool as part of that, but it integrates with really all the other tools in the portfolio, which means that if you're using AIMSIM, you can use it standalone to model specific scenarios, but you can also connect it to everything else, including CFD or testing solutions, um, and even your, your PLM tools in, in TeamSense. It integrates with, with everything. And, and as I say, it's primarily a, a 1D network modeling tool to, to model systems very quickly um, compared to, to some other analysis tools. CFD typically takes longer. 1D tools are, are normally much faster and hence a lot more permutations can be evaluated. And so in, in the, the aerospace side of things, it really, um, fits into almost any design of, of any of the aircraft types in, in this industry, um, really from airplanes, just general control systems, unmanned vehicles for, for batteries and, and, and control systems, to, to helicopters, rockets, satellites, really the whole um, spectrum of aircraft types in, in, in this space can use AIMSIM. And there's over 200 um, companies in, in the aerospace sector using AIMSIM on a daily basis. And so basically, um, it, it's scalable multi-physics modeling um, to, to cover really all, all of the areas of um, simulation requirements, from fluids to thermodynamics. And um, today, we're going to look at um, environmental controls from Scott. Um, but really, anything that, that requires a system um, can be modeled with AIMSIM. Um, and it's been around a long time. It's been around about 30 years. And over those years, it's developed a number of open um, connections to, to other tools in the market from Modelica to, to MathWorks, um, FMI interface and ND space and national instruments are all areas where um, AIMSIM can connect to bring in data from, from other sources um, to really create a full system model. And so that there are a number of dedicated kind of sub models that, that really goes part, part of AIMSIM and, and really people have used it to model landing systems, flight controls, all the way through to fuel systems, environmental control systems. A lot of that is, is aircraft cabins. I, I know Scott today is going to look at a refrigerate, refrigerator system. 
but really all of the, the, the sectors of the aerospace industry can use AIMSIM and its submodels to, to really dial in um, systems very quickly. And so if we look at some examples and these going back a little while, 2002 is, a, is an early AIMSIM model of, of, a, of a rocket um, propulsion system and, and obviously a fairly simplistic model back then, but, but was revised in 2007 to, to model the whole of the control system of a rocket, including the combustion, including the, the nozzles, everything else. And, and as, as time has gone on, people have been doing more things with AIMSIM, pressure of valve in, in aircraft braking it is a hydraulic system that highlights how flexible AIMSIM can be where it, where it can tackle you know, very diverse problems very quickly. And then moving forward a little bit more, this one is for an air, environmental control system, a little bit more similar to what we're gonna be looking at today, it was done in 2009. And you can see that the, the networks of, of the, you know, pieces of the, of the simulation start to get a little more complex. Um, and in 2010, um, a company did a full, a full um, servo actuator for a rotor. Um, and you can see that that um, is, is, is even, is, is getting more complex. And so as, as more people use AIMSIM, the, the bigger the models are getting and, and the more complete systems are, are being tackled. Um, and so most recently, um, these flight control electromechanical actuators are modeled with, with AIMSIM as well. And again, you can see how um, it, it's getting quite complete in terms of modeling all the pieces of the system. And so from some clients who were using AIMSIM, and my Leonardo aircraft are one of those, they really wanted to reduce physical tests um, and, and costs by, by doing more simulation. Um, and they used it to look at the, the cabin environment and, and really were able to dial in a, a good model and evaluate you know, many different scenarios to come up with a much better design. And as you can see down at the bottom there on the right, um, they, they were very successful in their use of um, the tool to, to create a better environment for passengers and, and pilots. And then this is um, what you, basically a Siemens e-aircraft, which was sold to Rolls-Royce, um, and they used AIMSIM to model the, the battery and the propulsion system in an e-aircraft and coupled it to the flight control system. So, so you can see today we're going to be talking about refrigerants and that kind of system, but, but the flexibility of AIMSIM really lets you tackle a very diverse set of problems. And then part of that flexibility is the templates that come with, with AIMSIM. Um, really, you know, whatever discipline you're working in, be it aerospace or refrigerants or really anything, that there is a complete library set that comes with AIMSIM. And so there's no need to, to reinvent the wheel for each, each type of device that you want to model in the system. Um, and that's a little different to some of AIMSIM's competitors in the market, where, where often you need to, to start from scratch for each, each piece of the, the model you want to build. And so when we look at, especially for, for aerospace, there's over 90 different templates for, for different components in, in an aerospace um, system. Um, and, and so you, you can see that it's very quick to, to start with the model and, and build it up very quickly from, from these template designs. And so with that, um, that's kind of the overall summary of AIMSIM. It's, it's a 1D network modeler for, for rapid prototyping of, of very complex systems. Um, and it's been adopted worldwide. So with that, Scott, if you could take the ball and I'll pass it to you. Okay, <clears throat> I should be sharing my screen now. And yep, that's it. Perfect. So good afternoon, welcome, uh, or good morning in some cases. Just want to discuss, you know, how does AIMSIM really first fit into uh, your product development process and what it really works best as it, once you do receive uh, a market required uh, product demand or that sketch on a napkin. Once you have that in your hands, that's a, that's a great place to start with AIMSIM. And from there, uh, you know, start iterating on uh, design uh, sizes, shapes, requirements, uh, performance. You can also use AIMSIM to test out control strategies optimize uh, for this particular discussion. We've been talking a lot about thermal performance and then also in the refrigerate, uh, re refrigeration de dehumidification industry, uh, talk about how new regulations are really uh, driving the change in refrigerants used 
and how Aimson can really aid you into looking at different refrigerants and their performances in your in your systems. And then, you know, of course, you know, find perhaps compromises between thermal performance, system complexity, uh, system costs to market, et cetera. So uh, a, a lot of value just from, you know, the initial get go all the way through to uh, produced, uh, you know, marketed solutions. And then AIMSIM can really uh, allow you for that next product and that next required uh, solution you need to have. Uh, you know, be that much further ahead when you have to start developing that particular uh, product or on that program and, and get that to market much faster. So discussing about uh, AIMSIM and the built-in uh, libraries, built-in components, and then uh, some of the built-in tools that are available to you, uh, these are all pre-set up, but they're also great leads as far as, uh, you know, what information do you need to enter uh, from, say, a heat exchanger test uh, to improve the products in the library to fit your particular needs? Or, you know, if you do have this microchannel heat exchanger, uh, it has a lot of dimensions. How do I accurately get the, accurately get the correct dimension, the correct field for the modeling? of that heat exchanger and, and get you know the results I need and the results are that are accurate. Um, the, the other thing of course would be you know uh, specific tools that AIMSIM can have incorporated that AIMSIM does have incorporated into it for say modeling heat stacked heat exchangers etc. These are all um, you know it's customized components specifically for heat, ex uh, heat exchange uh, refrigeration, uh, dehumidification uh, companies that are they're already built into the software. You can start, uh, you know, building up your products easily from day one. So, so with that, I'm going to jump over to the the software with that lead in and go go uh, with a look at today's model, and and. Just to give you an overview of what we're looking at here, upper left hand corner, we're going to be uh, just going through the material definition, uh, material definition for this particular model. Uh, we also have a, a very simple PI control system that we're going to walk through. And then overall on the right hand side here is just a, a refrigerator freezer setup uh, with uh, a food load in both compartments and then the evaporator condenser and a comp compressor with the refrigeration uh, system and the air handling system all built into it. So, so to start, let's take a look at the material definitions for this particular model. Uh, all you have to do is just drag and drop on uh, these particular uh, circles as far as what you're going to be uh, defining. So for today, we're, we're going to be discussing polyurethane foam. These are all color coded so you can see uh, with respect to uh, where is the material used in the model as far as uh, how much material is used. Um, we'll go into that a little bit later. Uh, interior material, color with light blue, you can see where that's being used. Uh, plain carbon steel, which is going to be used for the outside case. Food, again, uh, it's this is uh, you know, it's a refrigerator freezer. There's a there's a there's an amount of you know food that has to be frozen or chilled or etc. This could be anything uh, in this kind of category as far as uh, bottles of beverage etc. Uh, refrigerant and refrigerant's one of those areas that um, is changing quite rapidly with respect to requirements. Uh, AIMSIM has built in a full library of uh, different refrigerants. And for example, this one is built around a particular refrigerant. And I just wanted to show you, uh, you know, how easy it is just to change refrigerants. Uh, and this one's actually hard coded in uh, for this particular model. But then, you know, if, if this particular refrigerant is not exactly what you're using, you may be using a uh, mixture of refrigerants uh, that can be defined within ASIM 
you have uh, the capability of defining up to five different types of refrigerants in your mixture that could be used in your system. And once uh, these are all defined as far as mass fractions, it also gives you the ability to uh, just con confirm uh, the, the properties of that particular mixture uh, with, with a combination of pressure and enthalpy uh, diagrams, TS diagrams, and so on and so forth, as far as information that just allows you to verify, yeah, th yes, this is indeed my, my mixture of refrigerants I'm using. This, this doesn't match, this also matches what my expectations are to performance of that refrigerant and, and go on from there, so. So another thing uh, that concludes kind of the material definition, I uh, wanna just discuss control system. Again, this is just a simple PI controller uh, with, uh, a few parameters from the system uh, flowing in, and you can you can identify them just with the same uh, number in the bubble uh, as far as the signals coming in and and being flown out to uh, is how you can track it. But you can have, of course, much more complicated systems here. And then AIMSIM also has the ability to uh, implement, uh, say, state chart. Uh, control systems by just adding the blocks necessary and giving the model that particular definition. Also, uh, it has a lot of capability with respect to uh, hardware in the loop, which uh, what, what's really required is a physics-based model. And on the right-hand side is exactly what we have of uh, this refrigerator freezer. It's a physics-based model. You could take this model and, and port it into a test setup where you could have hardware in the loop where you have your actual controller working with this particular model and seeing how it does perform. So uh, a lot of different options there. Um, but for this particular example, we're gonna stick with a very simple PI controller. So now let's talk about the actual refrigerator freezer model itself and just see, take a look at uh, the idea of components and uh, how it's hooked up and how it's built up here, at least on the freezer side. Uh, it first starts with first uh, a convection component uh, into a, a, a mass that is uh, representing the external wall. And that, of course, you have conduction between that and your external insulation. And then you have additional conduction from your external insulation to say an internal insulation layer, and then conduction into your internal material, which might be your, you know, modeled as what you typically see on the inside of refrigerator freezers these days are that, you know, the white plastic that we're all accustomed to. And, and that's how this model is just built up from uh, components of material and then whether or not you know, there's convection or conduction between the different layers uh, to the inside here. And then once we're looking at the particular inside, of course, we have, uh, since it's filled with air, we have convection. And then uh, with, with that, it's, it's split up four different ways. We have, of course, convection to a heat load, I'm sorry, a food load and requirements to keep that cool, of course. We have a temperature probe, which is uh, set in, uh, signals back to the control system. And then we also have a definition for how big is this volume. So, uh, you know, a, a chamber where we can actually key in a, a specific volume for it. And of course, you do see the lines here. And th these are the lines of incoming air, in incoming cool air to keep this chamber a certain temperature. This modeling scheme is really uh, the same uh, as, as with the refrigerator section, uh, no real changes. Uh, the only difference, of course, would be, you know, probably a larger chamber volume. Uh, and then the other thing that happens is uh, based off of the cooled air, uh, we do have a variable uh, splitter here, which uh, reads in, you know, of course, 
the temperatures of each the freezer and the refrigerator, and then changes how much uh, cooled air gets uh, cycled to each to maintain the temperature for this particular section. So from here, we just want to take a look at the evaporator and how that is particularly modeled here. So the blue line here is the refrigerant flow through the evaporator. Again, the, the, the brown line here is the uh, airflow through the evaporator. Uh, this is what's described as a discretized approach to modeling the evaporator, where uh, Let's walk backwards from the refrigerant line, but we have a refrigerant line conducting through a mass, which is going to be the, uh, the the mass associated with the aluminum in the evaporator. And then, of course, we do also have uh, a convection element, once again, uh, uh, transferring that energy from the refrigerant to the air. Uh, where it gets fed back to the to the refrigerator freezer. So with this, uh, you you have four different models as far as uh, the the amount of aluminum and the and the convection properties in the in the particular heat exchanger. Uh, this is you know gives you a lot of variability as far as uh, not only uh, you know size, cross-sectional area, et cetera, that this particular uh, quadrant is representing. But it also allows you uh, to take a look at a different, uh, you know, setting up the correct correlation factors uh, and, and also uh, considerations for the orientation this model may be in in real life. Uh, is it, are the tubes, uh, leading up to a horizontal, are they vertical? What's the correct correlation uh, factors for that? Uh, so there's not, it, although this looks really simple on the screen, uh, there's a lot of complexity to it. So if you're looking at this and you're thinking this might be a little too complex for your particular instance, AIMSIM has a couple different models. It's kind of almost like a tiered approach to modeling uh, evaporators, condensers, et cetera. And I just wanted to go through those quick. The first one that's also available to you is this half heat, heat exchanger model. This is probably uh, one of the simplest models for modeling uh, something like this in AIMSIM. And they're really uh, simple to set up as far as, uh, you know, what's, what's the volume involved in heat exchange uh, and then uh, what's uh, is volumes uh, for flowing, you know, for the refrigerant side and how much refrigerant uh, is held there, cross-sectional area, hydraulic diam diameter, et cetera. So to just to get going and just to throw something into a model just to see if it's, how's it going to work and what's the performance, AIMSIM has very, very simple uh, components that you can drop into a model and use and get an answer really fast without a whole lot of definition and just to see, uh, you know, what's happening. And these will be, you know, accurate to, you know, five, 10% uh, what you'd expect, you know, from, from a real world model. Next up, you, you also have available to you, um, you know, if, if your models look good there, you can increase that complexity again to, uh, an additional set of components where you can model tube and fin or microchannel heat exchangers. And again, this is the area that um, you may have a lot of different uh, dimensions that you're kicking around from catalogs, et cetera, that you just want to model what's happening within the heat exchangers. You can take those dimensions and use the tools built in AIMSIM. And I just brought up one here where you can define the size of the microchannel, the dimensions, the cross-sectional areas, all the information about the fins, uh, as far as pitch and material thickness, et cetera. And then just really take a look at, you know, uh, you know what's this particular buildup and uh, perhaps some finished or drawing values that may be uh, 
utilized to check back to the catalog or does everything match up with what you'd expect and then also move forward to, you know, for potential information that you could even get, uh, you know, preliminary quotes from your vendors on how much, you know, a, a heat exchanger such as this would cost. <clears throat> And then from there, of course, that's microchannel. Uh, same thing with tube and fin. Uh, great tools that they have uh, where you can have uh, define up a tubing bank as far as you know what's the number of tubes in each, uh, let's say top and bottom, uh, each bank, you know, what's the size of the tubes, pitch, et cetera, and put this together uh, as far as uh, you know, as far as what's the flow directions and then followed up by, uh, you know, what's the information, uh, final information as far as, uh, you know, frontal area, uh, how much uh, exchange area uh, can be used for a heat transfer, et cetera. So this is perhaps the most complicated model of all the heat exchangers. So going back to our particular model here, And just looking at how some of the other areas are being uh, modeled, we have a small capillary tube in between the suction and the pressure line just for uh, heat exchange. And then followed, of course, with the compressor fluid is going counterclockwise here to a condenser. And the condenser has the exact same uh, discretized modeling approach as we saw up in the in the evaporator here. Uh, all the same rules apply here too, as far as all the different modeling approaches that can be used uh, for uh, this particular uh, unit. So, One thing I wanted to also note though, of course, was in, you know, a lot of people do fight, uh, you know, ice accumulation, ice buildup, on the evaporator. One thing that Aimson does have built into it is it's called ECFD. And it's an it's a it's a it's a actual star CCM uh, analysis that's limited in, in cell size, number of cells, that you can look at specific uh, properties of uh, the heat exchangers themselves, look at ice buildup seeing if it's a problem for you, and then just checking out how that ice might be uh, you know, limiting the flow through the heat exchanger. And this is available to you. Uh, it's a, not just another step in the analysis that you don't have to um, have, you know, take this information out of AIMSIM and go run it in STAR per se. You can do this with, from within AIMSIM and look at flows and have that information put back into your models and aim sim and just have even better analyses of the overall system uh, based off of this information. So again, great tool that you know can even improve predictions further. So I'm gonna just jump same exact system. This is one's all set up to it, it's been already solved. I can go through a solution sequence here just so you can see how fast this does solve. But what it does is it's set up for 86,400 seconds, one day's worth of, of solution. And you can see how fast this will run. I believe it's been a, between uh, 11 and 12 seconds. Uh, this one's 12 today. So a very simple model to run. You know, 12 seconds, you can iterate on this easily and change parameters and, and just update designs and see what's happening. Uh, with that, you know, just to display information, uh, you can click, let's say we wanted to see the, the temperature of the food in the freezer. You can see uh, at the start of the simulation, we started at room temperature and we wanted, and the way the system operated, it was just an initial cool down in this particular zone, uh, pulling the food temperature down and then hit steady state you know, after a period of time and then just help. Same thing, of course, food in the refrigerator. 
All you have to do is really click on the component that you're interested in and then just drag or drop whatever, uh, whatever information you're interested about. So here would be heat flow rate, et cetera. Um, and then uh, we can also take a look, say evaporator, mass flow rates uh, per unit surface area. It's relatively constant, but all these parameters, once you click on the component, you can just drag and drop it onto the solution window and see what's happening uh, with respect to those uh, components. Built in, you can also, of course, uh, take a look at, you, create, you can create save plots and take a look at what's happening uh, as far as uh, temperatures. Uh, like I said, refrigerator, freezer temperatures, these are all saved. You can easily create these yourself. And then another one that's actually fun here is to take a look at the, the diagram. And I'm just going to play this at 10 times speed. But you can kind of, it'll go through the HP uh, diagram, you know, from initial cool down. And then uh, you can see it as it hits steady state. And then I'm going to speed it up here and just how it changes throughout the initial or from the through the entire run. And what's happening from the refrigeration side as it cools. So plotting, diagramming, uh, and then of course, if you don't like or you want additional information on particular, uh, you know, uh, parameters, values, you can define your own in the post-processing window at the bottom here. And, uh, and from those uh, evaporate capacity, for example, compressor power, define those. And uh, I, you know, once those are defined and it has the equations, you know, built in, or you've defined these equations, uh, you can see just same exact methodology uh, to create a plot, just drag it up into the work window and show it. So, so just that should uh, that really uh, concludes everything I wanted to talk through about uh, refrigerator freezer uh, demonstration uh, today. It, as you can see. Uh, this is a particularly simple example. We can it can easily be changed to coolers, uh, open air, dehumidifiers, any number of things with heat exchangers, refrigerants, uh, air insulation, etc. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, I can also go through and point out some uh, other other things that I find really interesting about this particular model, um, but. It, it's it, the, the software is extremely powerful, extremely easy to uh, just go through and sketch and build a model up uh, just simply by, you know, looking at your library of components and just dragging and dropping uh, components onto screen and hooking them up into such a series, you know, just choosing, choosing from your library and going, going forth. So anyway, uh, Adam and Jonathan, I'll toss it back over to you. Excellent. Thank you, Scott. That was great. Um, so Jonathan, can you um, read any of the questions we have in the chat? Yeah, absolutely. Um, first, thanks, Scott. Thanks, Adam. That was fantastic. Um, for everyone out there, I welcome you. If you have any questions, please feel free to put those in the chat now. You can put them in the Q&A tab. And you can also, um, if you'd like to be unmuted, you can request that in the chat, and I can give you permission to unmute as well if you'd like to ask out loud. But we do have... I think two questions for now. Um, you know, we'll see if any others come in. But first, um, you know, Scott, is it possible to set up parameter sweeps or anything for one variable, multiple variables? What, like, what are the optimization capabilities? Sure. So, what what you can do here, and this one's really set up kind of nicely for it, is once you go into uh, simulation, uh, you can set up. On parameters, let me pull this over here. Standard options. So 
Uh, from here, you can actually tell it to go into a batch run. And I'm trying to figure out where that is. Anyway, but let me take a look at the parameters <coughs> too. Ah, here we go. Sorry. So you can uh, tell it to load. Uh, let's see. Uh, hold this. Design matrix. No selected. But you can essentially, from the parameters that you have, you can set up, set up a study manager that. Uh, I don't have anything loaded actually. I thought it would be, we would pull this in quite easily, but you can uh, load it up and show a design matrix and pull in uh, parameters that you can tell it to start at a particular value and then uh, set up a step size of how, how much you want to increment uh, those particular parameters. Uh, and then uh, number of steps below, number of steps above, uh, for example, say if you wanted to start at a value of 100, you put in a step size of 25, uh, four below, four above, uh, you know, that would run through uh, eight iterations from zero to 200. And uh, you can also do min max values, et cetera. Once you set this up, uh, it will take those parameters. Uh, into the solution and then run those sim those eight, eight solutions simultaneously as, as well as it can. It'll make you four at a time, et cetera. But then all those will be available to you uh, in your plotting uh, where you could actually um, have available in your plot screen uh, which particular uh, you know, set of parameters were used for a particular plot. And, and just and just take a look at that information. So, so it's very easy to set up. I unfortunately don't have anything set up for this particular analysis. It looks like that I can do really fast and easy, but uh, it's it, it's just as simple as choosing the parameter, setting the limits, and then telling it to do a batch run where it would do uh, all all the all the solutions, and then it's it, your post processing is just as easy. Very cool. And could you do multiple parameters at the same time or just one at a time? Yeah. Yes, you can do multiple at the same time. Okay, very cool. Um, and then the other question we had was that, you know, you sort of talked about the, the built-in CAD capabilities, but, you know, just curious to hear how AIMSIM plays. I think you mentioned hardware in the loop, but also, you know, if, if, if users have other analysis um, packages or, you know, results that they want to tie in, things like that. Can you talk about AIMSIM's availability to integrate with those other, other tools as well? Mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of on a component by component uh, basis, and I don't have a good suggestion off the top of my head, but it, it, it allows you some of these libraries and components, and I'd have to go in and figure out which ones exactly, uh, allow you to define uh, more so you 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 again range from you know very simple pipes, uh, ducts, bends, etc. To you know much more complicated uh, uh, components that you can drop in. Uh, I, I was just pulling up here an example of where you know a specific duct was used. I'm zooming in you know profoundly just so you can see it was used to pull in to do actually the analysis. Uh, with STAR to then take that information back to the AIMSIM models. But you have that, again, that same wide range of being able to pull in uh, based off of the component, you know, that additional information, get the analysis for that, and then it's, it, it's performance added back into your model, so. Okay, perfect. And that's all the questions we had. So Adam, I'm gonna throw it back over to you if you have anything else you wanna add. Otherwise, I think we're good to wrap up. No, I think we're good. Thank you everyone for attending and thank you, Scott, for that, that presentation. It was great. So thank you everyone. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.